Good morning. In this lecture, I am going to cover the operation of a sine cos complement multiplication algorithm known as Robertson. Before that, we will see why multiplication algorithm is important in a data path design. If you take data path components, there are plenty of uh, uh, components like adders, multipliers, shifters, etc. In that, multiply plays a key role. Why? Because multiply lies in the critical path of your data path design. So the performance of your data path design is highly dependent on the performance of your multiplier. That's why many people have proposed different multiplier architectures in literature to reduce area, to reduce power and to increase the performance of your multiplier architectures. With this background, we will see how a basic multiplication algorithm works. So if you take any multiplication algorithm, there are uh, two operands, right? one will be the multiplicand and the other one is multiplier. Right? Let us take an example, I am going to multiply the two operands 6 plus 6 and plus 3. Right? So I expect the result to be plus 18. How to perform this multiplication? First, let me convert the digits to a binary number, right? So, plus 6, the equivalent binary value is 0, 1, 1, 0. For plus 3, the equivalent binary value is 0, 0, 1, 1. How this multiplication is performed in a manual uh, calculation? We will write the multiplicand and then the multiplier, right? So we have to check each and every bit of your multiplier one by one. When the value of the multiplier bit is one, then I have to add the multiplicand with the result. If the value of the multiplier bit is zero, then I have to add zero with the result, right? So here the value is one, so I will take the multiplicand as it is, zero, one, one, zero. And whenever I move from one multiplier bit to another multiplier bit, I have to shift the multiplicand to the left, right? So here I have next one, so I have to add 0, 1, 1, 0, but that should be shifted to the left. So the multiplicand is shifted to the left by 1 bit. So 0, 1, 1, 0. Here 0, so it will be all zeros. When you multiply this value with this, then you will get all zeros, right? And the final result is, I have to add all the four stages of partial products at a stretch, right? So 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and the inner of carry is also 0, right? So if I give 2 4 bit input for the multiplier, I will get 8 bits, right? 2n. So if it is n bit multiplier, so the multiplicand will be of n bits, multiplier will be of n bits, and the result or the product will be of 2n bits, right? If we see the conventional method, right, I am just calculating the partial product in different stages. Finally, I am adding all the partial products and whenever a zero is encountered in the multiply bit, then all zeros will be added with the uh, result, right. Suppose if you want to do the same thing in a machine, the main advantage is, I don't need to add all the four stages of partial products at a stretch. So what I can do is, at a time I can add only two stages of partial products and then later whenever the partial product gets generated that will be accumulated with the result. That is the main difference between your manual calculation and uh, machine calculation for multiplication. And the second difference is, here for each and every bit of your multiplier, I will be shifting the multiplicand to the left. But when we do it in the machine, right? We don't need to do it. Uh, we don't need to shift the multiplicand to the left. Instead, what I what I do is I'll just shift the result to the right by one bit. Right. Shift right by one bit takes place in the case of uh, multiplication by using machines. And the third one is when you do it with machines, I don't need to add all zeros. Right? There are multiplication uh, architectures available like uh, row bypassing. and then column bypassing and then two dimensional bypassing right
row bypassing architectures, column bypassing architectures and two dimensional bypassing architectures. These are the specialized architectures available uh, which will take care of these zeros, right? Whenever you find zero in the multiplied bit, then I can use the corresponding row bypassing or whenever I use uh, zero in the multiplicand bit, then I can use column bypassing and when I have zeros in both multiplication, multiplier and multiplicand, I can go for two dimensional bypassing. So what these bypassing architects will do, whenever it finds a zero, then it will just bypass this addition operation and it will directly go for the shifting operation. So if you see the operations here, one is addition and the second one is shifting, right? So whenever I get zeros, I don't need to add all zeros because when you add any number with zero, the final result will be the same. So in this bypassing architecture, the zero will the zero addition operation will be skipped and direct, directly the shifting operation takes place, right? Now we'll see how uh, a multiplication operation takes place in a machine. Now I want to multiply the same two numbers. Uh, plus 6 and plus 3, the binary equality is 0, 1, 1, 0 and here the binary equality is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. When I do the multiplication, the result will be of uh, 2 8 bits, so 8 bits. So in order to store the 8 bit value, I require 2 registers. Each register will have 4 bits. If it is of n bit, then each register should have n bits, right? So if we have the 2 register as A and Q, here A register will have 4 bits and Q register is also having 4 bits. Now the A register is initialized with all zeros and Q register is initialized with the multiplier bits. So here it is 0, 0, 1, 1. Next I have to check each and every bit of the multiplier bit. If the value is 1, I am going to add the multiplicand with A. If the value is 0 here, then I have to add 0 with A, right? So the countdown starts. This iteration should run for all the bits of your multiplier, right? So first you will take the LSD of your multiplier, which is 1. So I have to add the multiplicand plus 6 with A. So the operation here is add M. So it is 0, 1, 1, 0. If you add it, the result is 0, 1, 1, 0. You can take this value as it is. Next, we have to go for shifting, right? Shift by one bit. As I told you earlier, in the case of manual uh, calculation, we will be shifting the partial product to the left. But in the case of machine, uh, machine, I am going to shift the result to the right, uh, right by one bit, right? So shift right, or shift by one bit. So if you do the shifting, the value here will be zero, zero. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So here one uh, important concept is that whenever we do the shifting, the MSB, MSB will be replaced, inserted with 0 and the LSB is discarded here. Why the LSB is discarded here? Already we have processed that LSB of the multiplier, right? So that can be discarded and the next value will be coming here, right? So this value, one is already processed, next this one comes here, right? So the value, check the value of uh, the LSB of your Q register. Here it is 1. So what I have to do? I have to add multiplicand with A. So multiply here is 0, 1, 1, 0. We add here 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. Right? So this is again add M. Why? Because why? Because the LSB of the Q register is 1 now, right? Next, I have to go for shifting. So, 0, 0, 0, 1. I will take the value as it is. Then, I have to go for right shift. So, when I do the right shift, it is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Right? So, at the MSB, a 0 is inserted. And at the LSB, the previous value is discarded. The processed value of your uh, multiplied bit is discarded. So the second iteration is over. For the third iteration, once again we will see the LSB of your uh, Q register. Here it is 0, so I am going to add all zeros here. 0, 0, 0, 0. Add it, 0, 1, 0, 0. Once again take this value and do the right shift. 
so add 0 here and then right shift so 0 0 1 0 and then 0 1 0 0 so the third iteration is over here and the processed uh, bit is discarded now next I have to go for the last iteration right so what I have to do once again I have to check the value of the LSB after shifting right after shifting at each and every step after shifting I have to check the value of the LSB here the value is uh, 0 so once again I have to add 0 with A this value, if the value is 1 then I have to add M multiplicate if the value is 0 and the LSB then I have to add 0 with A right so add all zeros 0 0 1 0 and here the value is 0 1 double 0 this is add 0 and then I have to go for right shift Zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero. Right. So four iterations are over now. All the bits of your multiplayer is processed. One is processed here. The second one is processed here. Zero is processed here. Final zero MSB is also processed here. And this is my final result, which is nothing but plus. If you see the steps here, we are running the iteration 4 times. Why? Because we have got 4 bits in the multiplier and the result, I mean the final product is slowly getting placed in your Q register and A register. The lower order number is stored in Q register and the higher order number is stored in A register. Uh, this method of uh, multiplication can be used for unsigned numbers. What happens when I have a signed number? When I have a signed number, what happens? We will have a sign it here, right? When I do the shifting, when I do the shifting, the sign bit will be shifted here and a 0 is inserted. Suppose if I have a negative number, let us take an example. If I have a negative number here, then I will have 1 here. If I have a negative number, then the MSB will be 1, the sign bit will be 1. When I do the shifting, this 1 will be placed here and a 0 is inserted. So, during the running of the algorithm, automatically a negative number is converted to a positive number unnecessarily, right? Which leads to a wrong result. That is the reason why we cannot use this algorithm for a signed number. For signed numbers, there are algorithms available, right? Uh, in that we will see, we are going to see one multiplication algorithm called as Robertson. So Robertson both modified both these are all some of these sign whose complement multiplication algorithms available in literature right. so this is the complete algorithm so the algorithm will have 10 steps the first step is initialization i will be using the registers a count and f a is a register which will have n bits if my multiplicand size is of 4 bits then i will use the 4 bit register here and accordingly I have to set the count value, count is initialized with 0 and I have to go up to n. If the size is 4 then I have to go up to the count value of 4 and then f, f will take care of your sign bit during the multiplication and initially there is uh, uh, loaded with 0 and the inputs for this algorithm, one is multiplicand which is stored in m and the multiplier which will be available in q. right? So the first operation in this algorithm is addition where I am going to add the value of the multiplicand with the A register when the LSB of the multiplier, the multiplier is available in Q when the LSB of the multiplier is 1. So when the LSB of the multiplier is 1, I am going to add the value of the multiplicand with A register. If the LSB of the multiplicand is 0, I am going to add 0 with A. This is the very first step in Robertson algorithm. And then in order to take care of the sign bit, I have to calculate this f. Right? f is initialized with 0 here and the new value of f I have to calculate. So the formula to calculate the new value of f is here. I have to take the sign bit of the multiplicand, m represents the multiplicand. So we take the sign bit of the multiplicand. Here I have taken, taken 3 here, why? Because the size of my operand is 4. So it will move from 3 to 0. Right? So when you say 3, 3 represents the MSB, I mean the side bit of your multiplicand and 
Q of 0, which is nothing but the LSB of your multiplier, these two values should be rendered and that will be R with the old value of F. F is initialized with 0, right? So, you have to calculate the new value of F. After calculating the new value of F by applying this formula, I have to go for right shift. For right shift, I have to use all the three registers F register, A register, and Q register, right? So, the new value, whatever you calculated uh, earlier in the previous step, that should be placed in the sign bit of your A register and then the remaining bits of your A register followed by Q register will be filled with A dot Q of 3 colon 1. Here the LSB of the multiplier is discarded, right? So Q will have 3 colon 0, but I am just going to place 3 colon 1 here and the 0th uh, bit of your multiplier is discarded because it is, it is already processed here, right? So whenever you process one, each and every bit of the multiplier, automatically that will be discarded when you do the shift operation. Okay. And then I will increment, increment the count value. Count value is initialized with 0. Since I have processed one bit in the multiplier, I am incrementing the count value to 1. And then test, more, uh, test operation, I will check the count value. If the count is not equal to 3, if it is n, then you have to check for n bits. right? If the count is not equal to 3, then go to add. Why I put 3 here? Why? Because we have to process or we have to iterate all the steps only up to the uh, sign bit of your multiplier, right? After that, when it comes to the sign bit, the operation will be different in Robertson algorithm, right? So, up to the sign bit, till the count reaches 3, I have to redo this iteration. If count is not equal to 3, then go to add, add is here, repeat all the steps, right? So, perform the addition and then do the, calculate the new value of f and then do the shift operation, increment the count. So you have to iterate again and again until you reach this count value when the count is equal to 3 then the condition fails right. So it will come over here and then we have to perform a subtraction operation instead of addition operation. So I have to perform the subtraction operation how? Once again I have to check the LSB of uh, my multiplier. Now this LSB is going to represent the sign bit of your multiplier right. So the sign bit. If the sign bit is 1, then I have to subtract the multiplicand from the A register. If the sign bit is 0, then I have to subtract 0 from A register, right? And then in the final uh, step, I am going to calculate your final. So this formula is different from your new. For the final value of F, the formula is different. I take the sign bit of uh, the multiplicand and the sign bit of uh, the multiplier which is available now in Q of 0, the LSB of your uh, Q register, these two values will be exact. That will be your F final. And with this, F, I am going to do the shift operation. So, R shift, F A Q, A of 3, I mean the sign bit of your A register is replaced by the cal calculated value of F, F final. And then the remaining bits are replaced by A dot Q 3 colon 1. Here also, the 0th bit is discarded. Why? Because it has been already processed. Right? So, after completing all the steps, your final product will be available in A and Q registers. Okay. Okay. Next, we will see how uh, this algorithm works with an operand. Right? We will take one uh, sample operand. Uh, let me take uh, minus 6 and minus 3. Let me write it here. Minus 6 and minus 3. I am going to multiply these two operands by using this Robertson algorithm and I expect the final result to be plus 18. Right? We will see uh, uh, how this algorithm works. Before that, we will see how to give the operand uh, positive and negative operand to this algorithm. If it is a positive operand, I can directly say, say if you want to feed plus 6, I can directly put the sign bit as 0 followed by the binary equivalent of uh, this integer. If it is of minus 6, right, what I would do is you first write the value of plus 6 and then take 2's complement of it. Right? So if you take 2's complement, the value will be 0, 1, 0, 1. So this value will be uh, given to this algorithm whenever you have a negative operand. So if you have a positive operand, just fix the positive, set the pos uh, sign of your uh, uh, operand as 0 and then you give the binary equivalent. If it is of negative value, first you write a positive and then 
take the whose complement and this value should uh, given as input your uh, algorithm. Similarly, for uh, plus 3 it is 0, sin it is 0 followed by 0, 1, 1. If it is minus 3, then I will take whose complement of this 1, 0, 1, 1. Right? So my operand lock here is minus 6 and minus 3. Minus 6 is my multiplicand and minus 3 is my multiplier. Right? Minus 3 is my multiplier. So let me write it here. Plus 6, it is 0, 1, 1, 0. Minus 6, it is 1, 0, 1, 0, which is nothing but my multiplicand. For plus 3, it is 0, 0, 1, 1. For minus 3, whose complement of this value, which is 1, 1, 0, 1, which is nothing but my multiplier. Right? Next, we will see how this algorithm works. So, what are the values I have here? I require f and then the value of a, a register and then the value of q register and then count and then the action taken, right? So we will see the operation one by one. The first step in the Robertson algorithm is initialize a with 0, count with this 0 and f with 0. So a is initialized with 0 here. Since I got 4 bits, 4 zeros are filled here and f is 0, q is and count is uh, 0 here. And what is the next step? Your multiplicand will be available in m and multiply will be available in q. So multiplicand value is 1010 0, 0, which is nothing but the two's complement of plus 6, right? And similarly multiplier is 1101 0, 1, which is nothing but the two's complement of plus 3, right? So I have to fill the multiplier value here which is 1 1 0 1, right? So the action here is initialization. What is the next step? I have to check the value of uh, the LSB in the multiplier to register. If it is 1, I have to add multiplicand with A. If it is 0, I have to add 0 with A register, right? Now I have to check the value of the multiplicand here. The value is 1, 1 in the Q register. The LSB of the Q register is 1. That means I have to add M with A, right? So what is the value of M here? 1, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 1, 0, that will be added with A. So the result is 1, 0, 1, 0. So here one important uh, point is there, right? Whenever you do this addition here, we are using the two's complement numbers, right? So whenever you perform addition here and if you get a carry, you have to ignore it, right? This is two's complement arithmetic. So whenever you get a carry, you have to ignore it. Similarly, here also, whenever you perform subtraction, this is two's complement arithmetic. So, when you add the value, if you get a carry, you have to ignore it, right? And ensure that you are adding the multiplicand only with the A register, right? So, you have to perform the arithmetic operation with the A register and then shifting should be done with all the three registers F, A and Q, right? So, now I have added M here because uh, the value of the LSB is 1. After that, I, 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 what is the next step? I have to calculate, this step is over now. The next step is I have to calculate F nu. So the formula here is the sign bit of the multiplicand undead with the LSB of the multiplier or F fold. F fold, since we have initialized it with 0, the value of F fold will be 0 here, right? So F fold is 0 and what about the sign bit of the multiplicand? The sign bit of the multiplicand is 1 undead with the LSB of the multiplier which is also 1, right? So 1 and with 1, the result is 1 or with 0. So the final result of F nu in this situation is 1. So this is a new value of F. Right? And then what is the next step? I have to go for shifting. Shifting should be done with F A Q. 
So the sign bit of A is replaced by, by F mu and the remaining bits are replaced by using this formula. So the shifting is very simple. I have to replace the sign bit of A with F mu, right? So 1 will be placed here and then all the remaining bits will come over here. 1, 0, 1 and this 0 will come here. And what about this? It will come here. 1, 1, 0. Right? So you have to do the shifting. Shifting of F, A, I and Q. Right? So the sign bit of F is placed here and then the A value is shifted right and then the Q value is shifted right, right? by 1 bit. And you see here the processed bit of your multi multiplier is discarded now because the operation is over. What is the next step? I will increment the count value. So the count should be incremented to 1. So let me write the actions here. Here add M and then calculate F new and then right shift FAQ and then count should be incremented. So these are the steps we have done. So one iteration is over. Next I will check the count value. In the next iteration I will check count whether it is so we completed up to this, right? We shifted it, we incremented the count. What is the next step? I have to check for the count whether it is 3 or not. No, the count value is 1 here. So if count is not equal to 3, yes, count is not equal to 3 here. So the condition is true. Then go to add. Once again, you have to go for this addition operation. There I have to check the LSB of the multiplier, right? So check count and then this is my final result, right? So you check the LSB of the multiplier here. This is the output of the previous step. Check the uh, LSB of the multiplier here. It is 0. So what I have to do? Whenever the value is 0 here, then I have to add uh, m dot m multiplied by 0. We will get 0. So the 0 should be added with A. So I am going to add 0 with A now. Right? 0, 0, 0, 0. So this should be added. Again, this is complement arithmetic. So 1, 0, 1, 1, right? What is the next step? I have to go for shifting. Before that, I have to calculate the new value of f, right? How to calculate the new value of f? So, the new value of f here is uh, sine bit of m, sine bit of m, under with the LSP of your multiplier, which is 0. So, sine bit of m is 1, under with 0, 1 and 0, it is 0 or with f fold, f fold is already 1. So, since we have this r operation, the once the f becomes 1, it will be 0 till the end, right? So, here the new value of f is 1. Next, I will go for shifting, shifting of FAQ. So, how to do the shift? This 1 will come here, 1, and then this 1 will come here, 1, 1, 0, and then this one will come here 1 and then this 0 will come here 0, 1, 1 and the count is incremented this 2 so what are the operations we have performed now check count and then add 0 add 0 after adding 0 we have to calculate the new value of f calculate f new after that we have to go for R shift right? R shift followed by count is equal to count plus 1. So with this, the second derivation is over. Check the value of count. Yes, it is not equal to 3. It is 2 now, right? So I can go for one more equation. So go to add here. Next, I will check the value of the sign bit, which is 1 now. So if it is 1, then I have to add multiplicate with, sorry, if it is 1 here, then I have to add multiplicate with A, right? So this is 1 here, so I have to add multiplicate with A, the value of the multiplicate is 1, 0, 1, 0, right? 1, 0, 1, 0. So two's complicated addition, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, and here I am getting the carry, since this is 2's complement arithmetic, this should be discarded, right? Next, I need to calculate the value of f. 
What is the value of f now? The sine meter of m, which is one, and then with the LSD of uh, q, which is one. So one and with one, or f four. F four is already one, right? So once your f f new, once the value of f becomes one, it will be one till the end of your uh, uh, iteration, right? I mean, even a complete operation. So now the new value of f is one. Next time we go for shifting. So we do the shifting one, one, zero, zero, and this shift zero, one, zero, one. And I will increment the count. Now the count is three. So what are the operations we perform now? Add m, and then calculate f new, and then right shift. If we Q comma count is equal to count plus one. So the third iteration is over now. So before starting each iteration, you have to check the count value, right? So third iteration is over now. Now you check the count. Count is equal to three now. So this condition is failed. So we'll come to the next operation. Where I'm going to perform the sum of the three operations. Right? So this condition is failed. So we'll come to the next operation. Where I'm going to perform the subtract operation. Right? So for the subtraction operation, I have to check the value of the sine wave, which is one, right? So the LSD of the multiplier in the Q register is one. So I am going to subtract the multiplicand from A, right? So instead of performing the subtraction operation here, since it is two complement arithmetic, instead of uh, performing the subtraction operation, what I can do is I can add minus here, right? So the value is one here. So instead of uh, subtracting the multiplicand minus six from A, I am going to add the two's complement of minus six, which is nothing but plus six. So I am going to add minus m. This is your minus m. So zero one one zero will be added. Right? This is important. Since this is two's complement, it is possible. Okay. The subtraction operation can be converted to an addition operation. By taking the two's complement of the number, so I will take the two's complement of the number, and the value is zero one one zero. So this will be added here zero one 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 zero one one zero one. Enter on carry is there. Since this is two's complement, I will take this enter on carry can be ignored, right? And then I will calculate the new value for y, and the formula here is. Take the sine wave of your multiplicand and XOR it with the LSD of your multiplier. Now the LSD of the multiplier gives LSD of this two register gives the sine of the multiplier, right? So you take the LSD which is one. This will be XOR with the sine wave of the multiplicand which is one. So one XOR with one, the value is zero. So this will be my new value of F, F new. Now with this new value of F, I have to do the shifting. We do the shifting here, zero, and this zero comes here, zero, one. This zero comes here, this zero comes here, one, zero, and this zero is discarded, right? And the count is so. Count becomes four now, so I have to stop the operation. And if you see the final result, which is available in A Q, which is nothing but your product. This plus eighteen, right? If you see the operations here, it is add minus m and then calculate f final and then or shift f q. So after running four iterations, since I got four bits in the multiplier, I have to run this iteration four times. In order to get the final result, only for the sine wave, the operations are different. Up to the sine wave, we will perform the addition operation. For the sine wave, we have to perform the uh, subtraction operation. And while calculating the f, also the formula is different. Up to uh, the sine wave, we have to calculate f by using this formula. After once uh, the iterations are over, when it comes to the sine wave, then you have to calculate f by using A different formula, which is nothing but the sine width of uh, multiplicand exerted with the sine width of the multiplier, right? So this is how Robertson algorithm works. This is a uh, very uh, 
basic algorithm in sign plus complement uh, multiplication. Uh, there are uh, latest algorithms available like both and modified both. Uh, they will be uh, talking in terms of radix, right? Radix 2, radix 4, radix 8, something like that, right? So, in the case of radix 2, I will be uh, grouping 2 bits of the multiplier at a time and with that I will be performing the operations. If it is radix 4, I will be grouping 3 bits of the multiplier at a time and the operations will be performed. So, by grouping the bits in the multiplier, the number of uh, operations will get reduced, right? That is the advantage of going for both and modify both when compared to uh, Robertson.